Um, how would you like to start the discussion? I mean, there, there is so much there that... Uh, the there, there is so much, and each time you see the film, yeah, you, you discover many, many things. I, yeah. Today, I discover new details all the time. Yeah, um, I it's, think it's, it's uh, very concentrated, yeah. and it's really made on the, on the detail. Yeah. I think it's almost irresistible for us to try and piece together the story or the history of Ventura. But it's a very hard, it's like an uphill struggle because every time you find a piece here, you lose another piece that's Yes, and I, I do believe it's, um, it's not made for us to reconstruct it in, in, in that way. Mm -hmm. I think it's made to um, receive the film as a very concent of like something with many layers which are not there to be totally um, unpacked. unpacked I think it's uh, of course there is a challenge to discover things each time but uh, not necessarily to put total order in it because there is no total order mm -hmm. because of course it's uh, made on memories, on dreaming things, and it's, it, it must stay a little bit like a dream also, I think. Right. So, uh, Perhaps so one, one way for us to start unpacking what is possible to be unpacked is perhaps you could enlighten the audience a little bit about this figure of Ventura which in itself seems to be a fictional name because he states yeah. his name as being yeah. something else, Tavares. Yes. And, yes. Um, but he's been featuring in several of Pedro Costa's films, so if you could enlighten the audience about the, the back history of this character. I don't know all of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure it's uh, very important to know the real life because, as Pedro himself said once, um, once he was showing, I think it was the film before this one, uh, Colossal, Colossal Youth. Youth, and he said in, in the audience where, when they were showing the film for the community, um, for the Fontaines who were by then already displaced to mm -hmm. the other part, to the other local, um, someone stand up and said, um, Ventura, you were, uh, you were nothing there, you were a piece of shit, but in the film you represent all of us. Yeah. Um, and I think that is the idea. It became for Pedro, someone with whom he can work on, in the one hand, but also someone who represents a whole community. Mm. And so it's not very important his personal story. Of course, there are many details. Uh, and Pedro is always insisting on the um, um, their parallel stories mm. of Pedro Costa, the director, and Ventura, uh, who is uh, only a bit older than him, but mm -hmm. not much, and he's al always insisting in their parallel story, mm -hmm. their parallel destiny, especially when, without knowing it, they were together in the same place at the same time, which was Lisbon immediately after the, uh, the, the, the Carnation Revolution. Revolution. And that strange destiny because um, Pedro is younger than me but I was there too <laughs> at, and I was 20 years old uh, uh, and in fact I remember very well um, when you are 20 in a revolution that's something special Pedro was younger but he was already feeling that big big uh, collective uh, enthusiasm 
and all of us, we forgot about them, about these people who were coming a lot, who were there, many of them, in Lisbon, also in other parts of the country, working as a bricklayer, bricklayer, brick, uh, how to say, uh, builders. workers, builders. I actually met also many of them in another place which would be interesting to remember, to remind. Um, my, myself in 75, so exactly the same time. So 75 is the moment, the hot moment of the revolution, almost at the, at the edge of a civil war. Mm -hmm. And um, um, in, in that moment I was myself an engineering student, I was finishing my course, and we went to some mines which are very important in the central north of Portugal. Uh, and we, 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 in order to, 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 to come into the mines, we said that we were students of mining engineering, which was not the case. But the heads allowed that to, us to go there. And we were actually living with the miners, and all the miners were Cape Verdean people. Mm -hmm. So they were all over um, working for the um, <coughs> many things in Portugal. But in the big moment of the revolution, where we all were uh, Celebrating, celebrating the, the, the world of the of the workers and the peasants and so on, we they all lost their forget drug. forget them. Mm. We forgot them. <coughs> they were there, and they were just aside, and they were afraid. Mm. So this film is also about that this so atmosphere that of the, fear, yeah, fear that they actually had. That the the destruction of the uh, construction company mm -hmm. is blamed at a certain point on the revolution. So uh, is there a connection? Um, was the fact that it was sacked <coughs> by the engineer and the machines were taken away yeah, and that, everything was taken was away? That was Amadeu Gaudens, who was a very, very well-known builder before right. 74. So uh, yes, there is a connection of the changes immediately after 74. Yes, yes, of course. So, so that sequence where he walks in mm. the... In the uh, derelict uh, company there, yes, yes. Uh, which I but think is one of the saddest scenes I've ever seen in my life. It's something so sad that the talk on the telephone, the, the, the uh, uh, disabled telephone, the two telephones, and and the, the whole fear that they are going to lose their jobs uh, is something so touching, and the fact that they actually did. and then. Um, his uh, companion, when he tells about the fate of each one of them, it uh, was all disastrous. One of them had his guts uh, pouring yeah, outside yeah, his body, yeah. and uh, we know that Ventura himself was the victim of um, uh, an accident yeah, while he was. Fight, yes, yes. Yes, yes, and and his disease, <coughs> his shaking, looks like Parkinson's disease, but apparently is a result of the accident that he yeah, had. it's, it's not clear exactly what it is, and Pedro also talked a lot about that. We never s spoke about Parkinson, um, but he was having that. I don't even know whether it was the definitive thing or a temporary mm -hmm. thing. And he also said that in some cases they decided to enhance that effect. Okay. So uh, that's another side of the film and of, of this mm -hmm. system of Pedro because everything comes out of the relationship with them, but it's built. It's very, very. Uh, the film Staged. is full of uh, staged things. Uh, in many, many details, so it's, it's not life as it, as yeah. it is. And in that sense, um, Ventura seems to be an extraordinary actor. Yes, yes, of course. And in this film we discover another actor who is uh, Vitalina. Vitalina. Mm -hmm. It's clear that Pedro was suddenly totally uh, amazed with her. Her face and yes, her expression. Yes, the capacity of 
again, these very small details. I think one of the greatest scenes in the film, which is very quick and it's a small detail, but it's one of the great scenes. It's rather near the end when she reads the letter near the and she makes the, the smile and then she changes and, 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 and goes and um, then Pedro, so the, the two movements mm -hmm. of her, first of all changing the face, yeah. suddenly, uh, I mean, crossing the door, mm -hmm. and, and at the same time the camera moving towards uh, Ventura is absolutely a masterpiece, I think, of time, yeah. and all comes from their, their capacity, uh, her capacity of changing the face very quickly uh, into one of, I mean, it's one of the rare smiles of the film. Uh -huh. There are several smiles, actually. The film is very dark, very sad, but there are several smiles. Today was, Even from Ventura, there, there are a yes, few. Yes, there, yeah. there are three or four smiles in the film, which yeah. in a film like this are great moments. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, because she smiles, what comes afterwards very quick is one of the toughest moments yeah. of the film, I think, when she suddenly closes totally her face. So it's very violent. I, I have one more question before we move to questions from the audience, which is about those still photographies at the beginning of the film. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's totally uh, opaque. Um, what are those pictures about? This, this is from a famous photographer in New York in early, I believe, early 20th century, uh, Ries. No, it, it was a Danish mm. photographer. And I, I, I really think that there is a, somehow a clear bridge between that world in New York, I mean, the forgotten people, the very poor people, the, um, yeah. Is it the same photographer whose photos are closed dog view by Lazo Trier? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, to the son of Young American by David Bowie. <laughs> oh, right. Because I'm, I'm not sure that they are but pretty uh, similar. What's his name? Reese, no? The Is, it no. Is it Reese? Is it Reese? The photographer. I can't remember his name now. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Does anyone else? Can you talk, talk a little bit about the. Uh, mm -hmm strong influence of the American photographers in Pedro Costa work, because there is some influence, no? There are so many influences, yes. not just that. So I, I wonder what is the biggest influence? Um, I really don't know whether it's bigger than anything else. I mean, it's, it's, it lives in this world of references, first of all cinema, I guess, mm -hmm. um, uh, photographers, yes, but... Uh, um, and painters, because... Painters <laughs> also, of course, even music in a way, mm -hmm. but some um, poets. Uh, poets, yeah. But, um, Once I had a talk with uh, Ricardo Machka, yeah. I invited him to be here, but as you know, he's quite shy. And Ricard Machka uh, was uh, the person who, who helped to show Pedro Costa work in the United States and, uh, well, was able to, to publish his work to Criterion in, in, Stats, in the United States of America. And Ricard was one day telling me about the, the, the importance of the photographers of the American depression. You know, and I, I was just connecting because of your question. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the film, these photos, and this sensibility of Pedro to the, the, the photographers that photographed people during the, the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, be, I believe, in, I mean, the, the period is, of course, the kind of documentary photography in the 30s. Mm -hmm. and. Um, there is a close relationship, but I, mm -hmm. I, I, I believe this thing of the, the beginning is just one, one of these things that um, um, it's not 
planned to mean to, to give a key for any reference like that. I mean, I, I really think it's, it's, it's like the, the, the way he picks music. I mean, there's not much music, that's why it is so strong when it happens. Like the, in the organ, films. Yes. that organ that comes yes. all of a yes. sudden. Yes. And um, uh, as, as the little piece in the end of Wanders, for example, in a film without almost any music, that little piece of Kurt Tag is absolutely mm -hmm. extraordinary. I think and I think it's this. Yeah. And you has a one in yeah. the previous film, when, he, when Ventura plays at his old record yeah. with Tubaroyage yeah. uh, and yeah. the, the song of the struggle. It's and the, well, here the, the, the moment with the Cap Verde music. Is yes, very, yeah, the it's very, Warner. It's very special because it's we we were not somehow we, we are not expecting that. Yeah. Igor, you want to yeah, say something? Yeah, just want to add um, uh, this, this picture is from eighteen from the eighteen eighties in New York. Uh, Jakob Priester was a Danish mm -hmm. photographer who was there, uh, and I also read that uh, uh, Costa is really, really admires uh, these phot photographies of, of uh, Jakob Ries. Uh, so he he found it as kind of an ins inspiration for his previous films uh, uh, as well, and uh, I think there there is a kind of a relation to one sequence in the film which kind of mirrors these these photographs of Jacob Ries, um, where he, where there is also a sequence of still shots of uh, yeah s of uh, uh, I don't know it, it, several it, places. It can't be Fontanes, it must be another another place. Because Fontanias doesn't exist anymore, but it's also people uh, and the environment uh, they, they live in. So there is a kind of mirror. You mean the uh, statues? No, no, no. no. The statues, well, the when there is the Mormon song, when yeah. there is the Cape oh, yeah, Verdean okay. song, okay. it's exactly. like a series of still, uh, um, still moments. Although it's not still photography, but uh, characters posing inside some. Uh, settings that yeah, are, are not, or, yeah, rooms that are not part of the story. Yeah. Yeah. It really resembles the images of, of Jakob Ries, yeah. kind of a... Yeah, I thought there is a parallel to that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if he wants to pay reference to the uh, situation in uh, turn of the century America, um, but uh, he wants to definitely drop perhaps a parallel with um, this similar condition, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, can be found in Portugal today as it was 100 years ago, 120 years ago in, in America. It's appalling <coughs> conditions where people have to, have to dwell and live mm -hmm. there in Portugal. Good. Yeah. I think that Teresa wanted to say something. Well, it, it's still related to Ries. I mean, we should move on to something else, but uh, Ries' work, uh, among other works by uh, American photographers at the end of the 19th century, was accompanied by the writing of a book by someone whose name I don't remember anymore, but a very important moral uh, philosopher who wrote a book called The Other Side, which was on this, on, on the forgotten, the forgotten mm -hmm. people of this city were living in these dark places. And so The Other Side became this kind of expression to also to address those who are there, but that we don't see, that we keep on forgetting about. So it's called how, how the Other Half Lives. Oh, yes. That's, how the Other Half Lives, yes. that's the book yes. by Jakob Ries. He was oh, also, it's a Ries. He was a journalist who was also writing. Okay, so... So, so well, he was taking the pictures the... and writing as well. And I think this idea of how the Other Half Lives is... Yeah. I mean, this is about also how, how, about how the Other Half, in a way, lived half, yeah. this revolution. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's maybe significant. I thought it was someone else. But okay. um, I have a question about language. Um, that Creole that is spoken in the film is um, spoken in a manner that you absolutely notice every word that's being said. It's so um, there is so much emphasis on the sound and the melody of the language that I wonder whether Pedro Costa has the command of, of the Cape Verdean Creole to be able to understand or even communicate w in that dialect with them. 
But I think that's their language. I mean, that's. But Pedro Costa, does he understand that? Is he? I guess so. Proficient guess so. in the Creole. I guess so. It's it's not very difficult. I mean, I don't understand. I don't follow it. Yeah, me too. Uh, easily. I, I but that's because I'm not, I'm not that, used yeah. to, to live with them. And I think at this point he must understand, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's just normal that he uses it because that's the way they communicate among themselves, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I, 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 I want to... Spend time in Cape Verde yeah. to make Casa de Lava, so maybe back then, minor. I don't know, we, we were speaking about um, the, the photographs and the way, I mean, there's this juxtaposition, and it made me think of the juxtaposition that also happens in Casa de Lava. I mean, it begins with an excerpt of the film by Orlando, the, the eruption of the... Orlando Ribeiro, yes, Ribeiro. So, I, mean, I, I thought of that, um, I don't know, if, I mean, if, if the connection might be something interesting to discuss in terms of... For sure, I, I, I don't think the juxtapositions are accidental or just, I mean, um, there might be a reason for They're not at all accidental, but I, I, I don't believe with, with the stills of Jacob Wies, he wants to um, make a specific reference to a, a that period on that place, because I think that, at least it's my, my own view of this film, it's the fact that he's always concentrating in each, each, each shot different um, uh, layers of time. Mm -hmm. And in fact, all his cinema, um, since he came from Cap Verde, from Casa de Lava, and he went to Fontaines, became a, a way of reflecting, um, um, working on something much bigger than our own story, I think, our mm -hmm. history. I mean, it, it took those, that community, that specific character, that period of time, the Cap in people working in Lisbon after the revolution, until today, and they stayed. Um, but I think what is very special is that is really, I mean, while going more and more specific, more concrete, more on little things, is talking about larger mm -hmm. things. And the larger things is what happens in the world. I mean, it's, it's, it's the state of the world after, in, in the post-colonial times. I mean, the consequences of the, the centuries of colony, colonizing other continents and their, those effects in world politics today. And, um, and I think it's really touching the core of some of the biggest, largest problems in the world through this very specific thing. When, when I saw the, the first image, of course, I saw, the, like many others, was the elevator scene. Mm -hmm. which, yeah, which and was, I saw that it's, because it, it was a because, short film. Yeah. Because it was in Centro Historico. Yeah. I remember when I watched that, I couldn't believe. I thought immediately uh, that he was reaching a new level of his world and the point where very rare filmmakers today achieve that level of complexity and concentration because it's very complex. I mean, he, the whole situation of the, that box where these two Figures. Two figures are and many enclosed. voices. Many voices and the statue itself represents so many things because the soldiers who were fighting the colonial war were also the soldiers that made the revolution. Mm -hmm. They were the soldiers who were, you know, controlling things after the revolution and those that scare who scare the the African people living there. So there are so many layers inside that very <coughs> concentrated space. You and know, I immediately like thought he's talking about the world inside the box, the <laughs> elevator. Yeah, it's a very good idea. I, it reminded me of Manuel de Rivera, some aesthetic compositions of Manuel de Rivera, for, exa for example, 
uh, Valle Brown, there is a, a conversation between a statue and and the person there, and there is a whole song about it, and so and and there are many other scenes in Manuel de Rivera where riders and soldiers on statues and horses relate with people, real people, animated. So the the inanimate with the animate, and mm -hmm. I, I I find that he played a little bit, I felt that so much Oliveira, I don't know if I'm totally wrong. Actually, in, in the very same film, Centro Historico, the, mm. the, yeah, precisely, the that piece is, with yeah. our first king. Yes, uh, and it's the Oliveira talks, film. Talks to the tourists. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah. there is that thing, talking to history in the shape yeah. of a statue, and it's being very much something that Oliveira had worked on. Um, yeah, I don't know whether there is a connection direct, a direct connection, but of course uh, Oliveira is a reference for this generation and for Pedro too, that, yes. that's for sure. So yeah. there are many things that he might have. Uh, Oliveira is important for him, that's of course. Do you know something about all these voices? Once you uh, mentioned that, in this scene of the elevator, you have all these voices, and the soldier has also a Creole voice. I don't know how to say Creole in English. Yeah, that's it, Creole. Creole. Yeah. But, but that, that's the point of the film. I mean, this film is like, it's about metamorphosis. How do you say that? Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Um, in many, many other shots, yeah. um, the voice is the voice of someone is like coming from another body, yeah. or the story of one body is shown through another body. Mm -hmm. The story of one person is shown through another person. Like the obvious moment is when Ventura is lying down, mm -hmm. and they're talking about the other death. Um, but it's happening all, all the time in the film, so mm -hmm. the voices are not necessarily, and they are changing all the time, even, even in that scene, so it, the voices are not from the people we are seeing. Yeah. But that happens, it, it's a system in the film. And some people, That's why it's yeah. so complex and so difficult to, to understand in a certain way. <coughs> some people who are speaking are seemingly already dead. For example, in the first scene of the, the hospital, when his friends come to visit him, each one tell, tells him about their fates, and some of them are already yes. dead. So they are yes. telling about the, the coming beyond the grave. But ma many things um, are shown through other scenes, other things, or are represented by other things. Yeah. You know, the hospital, all the hospital scenes are shot in places, I mean, incredible places, like uh, you know, this uh, crypt, as you say. Yeah, the, uh, and, uh, yeah, crypt, the, and, um, those underground tunnels. So that there is, of course, a constant reference to prison. Yes, also. yeah. Um, can we talk a little bit about the, the construction of those spaces? Because obviously he has this drive towards indexical um, link to real locations. I don't think there is any studio or anything like that. It's all places that he the has elevator, found. The elevator, what is a studio? Yeah. Which one? The elevator. Oh, okay. He built that yeah. in the studio. That must be the only one, because the other ones must be... And, but then yes, he transformed place. those places through yes, lights yes. and that, the lighting that is very special. For me special. that's very important because um, <coughs> even if there is a continuity in his cinema um, from mainly Casa de Lava on, mm -hmm. because of the subject of the Capriolian people, yeah. um, and even if for me, of course, Vanda is a turning point in his conception of cinema or a moment where he went back to basics to start mm -hmm. again, almost everything else. Um, but um, there are other changes, and so Vanda is very different from Colossal Youth, and Colossal Youth is also very different from this one. And one of the differences is, I think, the fact that in Vanda, 
um, the place, uh, the, the houses, the little spaces of the, the Fontaineus, is the key thing of the film. And the destruction of Fontaineus is the key element of the film, that is shooting there while it is being destroyed. So the place itself, it's one of the, maybe the big character of mm -hmm. the film. The, the community is like a community linked to that space, that while it is being destroyed, in the name of saving them, is in fact destroying them as a community. Mm -hmm. So Colossal Youth, it's about displacement. So it's still shot in a real place, the new places, mm -hmm. but the new places are not anymore so um, they are not seen as uh, a character in their own right. A character in the sense that they become more abstract uh, and the relationship of people and the spaces becomes totally different because they are not well in that space anymore. They cannot connect. And in this film, everything is, or most of it, is real places, but they don't mean anything as such. I mean, they don't represent the specific places mm -hmm. where he shoots. Is the met metamorphosis, metamorphosis is 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 becoming the system also there. I mean, it's totally. Pedro is picking things here and there in order to create something with them. It's no more important what they are really, where they are, what they are. They are there just to, uh, as a, a sign for something else, I think. So the relationship with the, the material side of the spaces uh, of the films is changing and mm -hmm. becomes more abstract. I, I, I would not be surprised in case the next film it's entirely, it's entirely studio or totally abstract places. Yeah. I could, I would not be surprised. Right. You know? about, uh, about that thing, uh, that uh, space thing. Uh, Michel Certo spoke that um, uh, used to say that uh, uh, space spaces are the t uh, territories of power and uh, institutional places, and time is the only thing that common people has. So uh, in this film. Uh, uh, and connecting this with uh, the question of uh, gen genre, 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 mm -hmm. genre. Um, uh, this, this film has no genre. It's some kind of a specialized film where uh, people uh, have their time, but uh, as usual, but the time is fixed, maybe to 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 search for um, the spaces that they never had. See what I mean? Uh, maybe uh, this is a, a genre. Uh, all the film is a genre. It's it's um, a film that talks about everything, about uh, globalization, about uh, uh, localities, and uh, this game of space time that uh, many analysts talk, and uh, that uh, Pedro uh, shows in, in a in a way that is uh, very interesting because it's not it's. Uh, uh, José Bosé made a, um, a slow movement, a slow food, for instance, to show that slowness is not something that uh, uh, where nothing exists. is is a, a peculiar uh, type of space of of time that um, make us think, make us meditate, and uh, m maybe more than that, make us conquer the spaces that we yeah, never had. Yeah. Well, we have a specialist in slow cinema here, so I will yeah. not opine on that. <laughs> but but um, there is something, a last point I would like to raise, which is to do with literacy and the writing of letters. Um, there is a, an incredibly touching moment in the film where the doctor asks him, do you know how to write and read? He doesn't answer. But when the doctor leans over him to take his pulse, he grabs the pen slowly from the doctor's pocket and keeps it. And the doctor understands that as his answer, because you would expect the doctor to kind of react a bit surprised to have his pen stolen like that. 
but instead he understands the answer. And that's the connection that then establishes between him and all the other characters, because he's writing a letter supposedly to Zulmira, his wife, but in fact, he then hands in the letter to Vitalina as if it was from her husband. So, so the, that letter and that pen in the end connects all the characters, yeah. the main characters in the film, the doctor yeah. and all the other characters. <coughs> so I found the, that the absolutely poetic and just dialogue, incredibly touching. The di dialogue with the doctor is very important in, in his and to the silences, because some yes, questions he replies, some, yeah. some others he is he silent, doesn't. and all his silence are very powerful, yeah. because they all mean <coughs> something. something, and very, 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 they are very strong. But yes, the, the, the connection, with the link with the writing is very important to Pedro, and it's again very complex, because he, he has made that in, in, in other films, um, the writing as uh, as an object, uh, not not the writing for the film, because he's more and more insistent in saying that he's more and more discovering that cinema, like it was in the beginning of cinema, has little to do with with writing scripts. So he does not build the films upon writing previous writing, but the material. The objects of writing are very important, and it's he, he mixes many many ways of it because he puts these people saying things that comes come from poetry and writers and historians and whatever, and at the same time he uses their own the things they write and he is very much inspired by them. Mm -hmm. So it goes in both ways, and it's very complex. You, you should never trust totally uh, uh, what they say in that sense. I mean, it can be um, a quotation, mm -hmm. if often it is the case, or it is something that they have really made, mm -hmm. and then he uses it in a very strong way. So it, uh, yes, it, 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 the film is... Uh, there is that kind of um, recurrent mention of the wedding dress, yes. the shoes, the golden wedding ring, the ring yes. and yes. Um, the him building the house, buying the bricks to build a house for them, and that wedding that never happens. Or maybe it has happened and he has a bunch of kids, we don't know. Yes. Um, his age seems to have stopped when he was 19, years old, 19 years and three months old. And, and then he already is old and retired and has a number of kids and he's an uncle. We never know his age either. It's amazing. But there, there are those sentences about buying the dress, buying the, the headpiece, <coughs> the, the veil, everything but for the wedding. This, this, uh, System comes from earlier films. Also. Yes, yes. Um, Colossal Youth. Yes, he starts yes, by yes, reading this yes. letter, which says the same thing, and the a hundred thousand cigarettes. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. The letter. Yeah. yeah. So I wasn't aware that that comes from Robert uh, Desnoul, does it? From a letter that Nuno just yes. said that Nuno yeah, had right, said. Yeah. yeah. I would have given you a hundred thousand yeah. cigarettes, yes. which is a phrase that struck me as so powerful. A hundred thousand, I was just thinking how long it would take it to smoke all those hundred thousand cigarettes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I have a personal curiosity. Um, the last shot, um, I think I wanted to read in the last shot the following. The, they look a bit like bios of um, psychiatric drugs. Mm -hmm. you know? I think it's written Opinal, mm -hmm. I think. Opinal. And um, yeah, but they are and, knives, um, no? and we know They're by knives. the by the They are very well known uh, knives. Yeah. Opinal. They Sorry? are French knives. I couldn't actually oh. make out what they were. It's so quick, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's very because quick. I, I have it's Opinal. Nice, you know, yeah. They like, come like in different sizes. Because I had my conjecture, you see. <laughs> that was, <laughs> a, a, that was a leading was question. Yeah. Yeah. This it's was a leading question. A link to the fact he had that many yeah. injury. That, that's uh, 
but and it's the kind of knives that are always in the street, so mm -hmm. kids and uh, you know, which which makes a lot of people being uh, injured. Okay. And but, 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 but what is, is your conclusion? There is a reflection. I'll tell you. He's, he's looking in a window of the shop of the knives. Right. It's because my connection, my conjecture was the uh, was the following that. Towards the end, uh, we uh, we see Ventura saying to um, uh, his friend in the hospital, um, the doctor discharged me. And we notice that he's not shaking anymore. In fact, he helps, kind of feeds his friend he, uh, the soup without trembling, mm -hmm. and his hand doesn't tremble. Mm -hmm. And the trembling, in my opinion, was significant because we know that there was a side effect of the antipsychotic drugs that he was given every evening by the nurse through an injection. So um, I thought, oh, okay, at that point, towards the end of the film, Ventura is healed, so to speak. But then the last shot, in my opinion, represented, I know that it's wrong, but um, represented the vi um, kind of vials, and yeah. I thought, oh, those are psych um, psychiatric drugs. Therefore, the trauma, that caused the illness of Ventura never heals, really. So he says that he's healed, but actually uh, we, we end with this scene that would represent, in my opinion, that the illness yeah, is never think, healed and continues. And I think that's the magic of Pedro Costa, because he makes us start making that kind of connection. Yeah, but it's time. wrong, isn't and it? And it yeah. drives you mad, because, for example, the whole thing about Vitalina, being dragged into a flight, her clothes removed from her, she was down to her nightgown, or combinação in Portuguese, which is an underwear, and, <laughs> and being urinating on herself, a trembling of fever, blah, blah, you think that she's being deported. And instead, she <laughs> seems to be coming to Portugal to meet her husband. So it, it's utterly incomprehensible for me what, what kind of trip this is that she's... Uh, do you have a clue for that or is it one more <coughs> puzzle that is set for no, us? I think it's very question? explicit that he wants to, to make those uh, kind of confusions. Confusions, yeah. It's, that, that's the real method of the film. Yeah. Uh, so... Um, I guess all references of um, they refer to someone and something that happened. Yes. But the the moment in the film is always connected to something else. Something so, else. So I really think that's yeah, because the husband the, was buried in Cape Verde, yes. according to her. The address of the cemetery and the address where they lived is the same. So he was buried there, but then she was back in Portugal to attend the funeral and collect the pension. And collect what, the pension. That's what she says. Yeah, yeah. so very um, confusing. Which I think was a, an actual, something that happened, she was looking for it and the, she suffered a lot in order to get it. So yeah. they will refer that somehow, somewhere. Yeah. So all these things come from his, um, the things he collects uh, while living with them. And, um, but then he works on it. I mean, he works, he, he builds, he builds uh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I, I worked for two years in a slum like uh, Fontaine in the, at the entrance of Lisbon. And people would tell me that kind of stories. And about, as Semana Fasto was saying, Pedro probably hears these stories and then. I believe that his actors have a, a, a lot of saying in his films, and these stories come and go and uh, are filling the film without a, a purpose. Mm -hmm. It just speaks some of these stories, you no? Know? And the others, I believe they are invented by the uh, actors that suddenly go uh, <laughs> there and there. But no? interestingly, the film as a whole makes sense somehow. You know, there is a story, there is a Ventura and his story, there is his disease, there is the bricklaying business, there is the, the 
the destruction of the company, the revolution. So all, there are all these historical markers that are there, mm -hmm. and the person obviously exists. They are real Cape Verdeans. There is the utterly indexical accent and language that they speak. There is no doubt that it's their language. So there is a reality there. At the same time, there is all this fantasy that comes from their memory, from the filmmakers, artistic creativity all that um, combined together in an extremely I, I would say that uh, um, the, the scope the, um, the aim of these puzzles from uh, Pedro uh, as a, um, they, they just want us to each author to become an actor and each actor become another and uh, to produce these kinds of hypotheses yes. that uh, are not uh, exactly wrong yes are just some uh, hypotheses that may come and uh, because th there was this debate of uh, is the reader an author from the from a uh, uh, part in the uh, Foucault mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the thing is we have not just we, we haven't just an author and a reader we have an author a reader and an actor that those are the reader is an actor different from the author but these roles uh, mix together mix and uh, produce a kind of uh, mixed uh, hybrid genre que, that maybe is uh, uh, the ultimate uh, sense that we can find in this film. But I, I don't think there is one. Uh, of course, there isn't just one sense. There, there's all the senses that all that authors, readers, and actors could give to us. And that's that's changed. Yeah. I think that's a very good point for us to wrap up round up today because um, many of us will be going to the conference tomorrow morning um, so can I thank you, Manuel, I thank you very much indeed you. for your fantastic you.